Let's pray. Holy, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these people. I thank you that no matter what happens, no matter how crazy things can go, you're with us. I thank you that even though we could get lost in looking at what has went wrong this morning, you call us back to you. Because it's all about being in your presence. It's about experiencing you and knowing your truth. I ask that you speak to every heart that has joined us today. <clears throat> Whatever they need, help them find it. Be it strength, be it love, be it peace, be it joy. Whatever it is, let your spirit minister to their hearts today. Be with us here. We ask this in all of your many names. Amen. Amen. So good morning again. If you're just joining us, hello. Thank you for being here. Um... So I was away last week, but I hear y'all had a good time. Um, today's topic is inconvenient truth. Yeah, I stole it from Al Gore, I'm not even gonna lie. But today's not about the environment. It just fits. So if you go to Matthew chapter four, verse 19, come follow me, Jesus said. That's it. Seems easy, right? So I like to do this thing where I take scriptures that really have nothing to do with each other and blend them together and tell a story. So we're going to jump to the next one, Luke, chapter 14, verse 18. Then they all began to beg off, one after another, making excuses. How many made excuses before in your life? How many of you made a lot of excuses? <laughs> Especially on school days. I, I was, Woo! <laughs> Don't judge me. So... It's kind of part of being human. Things get asked of us, and we're like, oh, man, I don't really want to. So, well, you know, I got to take my dog to the vet that day. And you forgot you done told that person you took your dog to the vet two days ago. <laughs> and they go, but wait. Oh, it's a follow-up appointment. Mm. We have excuses because sometimes the things that are asked of us seem so burdensome. Or just inconvenient. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit what I want to do. It doesn't fit who I want to be. It doesn't fit my priorities. It might be important to you, but it's not important to me. So we make excuses. And we find ways to wiggle out of things. So in that first scripture, Jesus is addressing the first people who become the disciples. And Jesus says, come Follow me. The scripture in Luke, Jesus is telling a parable. And he's telling them, so there's this guy, he invites all these people to this banquet, and the people don't come. So he tells his person, go invite everybody you see. Don't matter. People you normally wouldn't invite to my house because you know I'm important. <laughs> invite them anyway. <laughs> so they do that, they come back, we invite them, but everybody you got has stuff. Well, you know what? Go into the far reaches of the places that we don't go and get us some people from there. Bring them to the banquet. Both things are about being obedient. Both things are about God is trying to move, Holy is trying to speak, and the people are like, I don't really want to come to your party. I don't really want to be around people who like all that God stuff. I don't really want to be around people who tell me I have to forgive. Don't really want to be around people who tell me I have to love. And for some people in my family, I don't want to be around Christy. That's me for y'all who don't know. I don't want to be around Christy because she's going to tell me that I should be more supportive of the LGBTQ community. She's going to tell me I shouldn't vote for the politicians I vote for because they're not good to that community. She's going to tell me that I can't keep claiming to be a Christian if I keep promoting people who do hateful things. Hmm. I don't want to be around her, so I'm going to tell her I'm leaving town for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Excuses. <laughs> because when, when I'm telling my family these things, how are they taking it? Mm. It's inconvenient. Mm. You're wanting me to go against what I grew up believing. Mm. The world changes. Mm. You have to adapt. Not my family. Nope. Mm. They out of town for Christmas. 
<laughs> There's another scripture. Acts chapter 24, verse 25. As Paul continued to insist on right relations with God and people, about a life of moral discipline, Felix felt things getting a little too close for comfort and dismissed him. <laughs> That's enough for today. I'll call you back when it's convenient. Felix was basically the ruler of the area. Felix was supposed to pass judgment because Paul had been taken, taken prisoner and Paul had been brought before Felix. Paul done been before everybody by the time it's all over. But anyway, right now he's in front of Felix and he's in prison. And Felix, for fun, says, I'm going to take my wifey down there and we're going to talk with Paul. So they do. And Paul starts saying, you can't do the way you do. You have to love God. You have to love people. You have to live a life that speaks to these things, where people see you and they know right. that you know who holy is, mm -hmm. because they can tell by the way you roll and the way you move and the way you do yes. that holy is with you. Mm -hmm. Felix was known for accepting bribes. Does that match up with the moral code that Jesus might have been a teacher? Nah. It wasn't convenient for Felix to be hearing about how Jesus comes and Jesus teaches us that we're supposed to love and that means we can't mistreat people. That means we can't steal from people. That means we can't take bribes from people. It means we can't put people in prison who don't belong in prison. Like the list goes on and on and on. Hmm. And Paul is saying these things, but in a very respectful way probably because, you know, this is the dude who rules. I'll call you back when it's convenient. And what did that one part say? Too close for comfort. See, sometimes we get around people and they start talking to us and the things they're saying to us, you ever get uncomfortable in a conversation and you kind of start feeling guilty and you're like, oh, that, yeah. that kind of hurt. I don't want to. And, and you get uncomfortable, right? Yeah. That's what was happening with Felix. The more Paul was talking about how finding out who Jesus was experiencing the spirit the way Paul did and how that changed Paul's life, Felix was wrecked. I don't want to know about this. This is going to change me. If I let this, this changes me. I don't get to do the things I was doing. Which also, his wife was his third wife and he had stole her from somebody else. So he didn't like anything Paul was saying. I'll call you back when it's convenient. Now, some of you in this room are like, this has nothing to do with us and what we're doing. And you're supposed to be talking about Transgender Day of Remembrance kind of thing today. <laughs> Hold on, I'm getting there. Holy calls us. <laughs> Holy calls us to be people who speak truth, <clears throat> who pursue justice and mercy. And what we end up doing is, well, that's uncomfortable. That means I have to talk to people. Or that means I have to show up. Wait, you mean I have to go be in a public place with other people and, like, mingle? Nah. All my introverts are cringing. Mm. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. And then Holy God goes a little further, and Holy goes, you know, if you would trust me, your life would look different. Mm. Some of us talk back. I don't gave you enough. I'll call you back when it's more convenient for me. Some of you get caught in the leadership, and this is your answer. No, this is inconvenient. It requires too much of me, and I'll call you back when I'm ready. Uh -huh. Yep. Some of us, it's just normal, everyday life. Not even leadership things. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, you're trying to do the right things, go the right places, say the right things, and, and you hear holy. Oh, by the way, for my new folks, I tend to say holy more than I say God. It's just a thing. You can use whatever language you want to. I don't, it doesn't matter. Holy starts speaking, trying to encourage you to do something a little bit different. Hand that $5 out that window so that man can go get a cheeseburger. What you talking about? That's my $5. <laughs> That's a, it's an inconvenient. I don't want to. I'll call you back when it's convenient. Why don't you go pay so-and-so's light bill? Because you know it ain't been paid. Why don't you go do that? <laughs> Holy, I don't know who you think you're talking to, but this is not Wells Fargo. Go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no Bank of America needs it. <laughs> it's inconvenient. 
But the things that really are the most inconvenient to us is when the Spirit begins to speak to us and want us to reconcile, want us to forgive, want us to love people, and then we don't like it. We don't like it a whole, whole lot. <laughs> we get very adamant. It's not convenient. It's not a thing. I'm not doing it. But then we want to go and do all the other things. So one of the things we see here a lot, and I'm not calling anybody, I'm just using this as an example. We come together before church, band practices, right? So I'm going to use Kdale, not you. So if Kdale has decided K don't want to forgive some people who done done K wrong, K want to hold a grudge. K don't want to love. But K gonna show up and K gonna do K's part on the drums. And K thinks that that balances it out. Because that's human nature. Well, God, I'm doing all this other stuff. Hmm. I'm putting my $10 in the plate. I'm being nice to people. I'm smiling more than I've ever smiled in my life. <laughs> I'm doing good, God. Have you given me what I've asked? Do you really know who I am? Do you love me? Have you said to me, God, here's my heart. And have you trusted me with your emotional well-being? See, that's when you get, oh my God, don't want to. Don't want to. Don't come poking and prodding on things that you ain't got no business poking and prodding on. You only supposed to care about the spiritual side. You know, if I'm paying my tithes, if I'm not doing bad things to people, that's all you're supposed to care about. Why are you wanting to look over here at my heart and my emotions? Why you want to know if I'm treating people good? Why you want to know if I'm okay? For God to love the world. If God loves us, God's going to care about every inch. Every part, even parts we try to hide, even the parts that we think shouldn't have anything to do with God. That's just our stuff, like finances. I mean, me and God, we had us some tough conversations about money. Mm. Like, hold up. Money is this side of the equation. You're on that side of the equation. No. Mm -hmm. Technically, y'all, I don't found out God. The equation don't matter. God just walked all over the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. <laughs> what, you, what you doing with this part right here, little girl? <laughs> What you don't want this part? <coughs> and we want to make excuses. And in the past week, you've seen posts. Transgender Week of Awareness. <clears throat> At my work, conversion therapy came up. Should we have a ban on conversion therapy? Well, yeah, we should. What's the process again? I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a politician. But the doors were open for conversations to happen. And I'm a firm believer that when God wants us to have some conversations, suddenly these things happen. Mm -hmm. We don't go looking for them. They just kind of, you know, appear. Mm -hmm. So when that happened at work, <coughs> three different people came to my office to talk to me about it. And you know what ended up happening? I was able to talk to people who know absolutely nothing, this much, about trans issues. I was able to talk to them and explain it in a way that they were like, yeah, we don't need that mess. And one even cried because she didn't know that this was a thing and that people do these things to try to stop us from being who we are. I'm here to tell you right now, the people who call themselves Christians and who say we're the Christians, we know what we're saying, and God don't want nothing to do with them people, they're liars. Mm -hmm. That's right. It says God loves everybody in here. Amen. Amen. And everybody Amen. means everybody. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're L, your G, your B, your T, your Q, your any of it. It doesn't matter. That's right. It doesn't matter if you're hetero, it doesn't matter if you're homo, it doesn't matter if you're five years old or 89 years old. That's right. It doesn't matter. What matters is if when God calls, we respond. That's right. So back to that Matthew verse, 419. 
Come, follow me, Jesus said. Verse 20. They didn't ask questions, but simply dropped their net and followed. That's an all-in moment. Jesus called. They could have made an excuse. I got to finish my fishing. Hmm. But they dropped their nets and stepped into what they were called to. And let's be clear. What they were being called to was away from the normal, away from what they knew, away from what they were used to, and into something brand spanking new. Our communities tend to think every year around this time, oh, this trans business, the world's changing. It's just different. You say the same thing every year, so obviously something isn't working. Mm -hmm. So what if holy is calling us to be the people who step into the gap and who say, you're not going to say that next year? Because next year you're going to be on this side of things with me. Because holy's going to speak to you in a way that you understand. And holy's going to show you that you don't get to say anything holy made and that holy loves doesn't belong. Amen. Mm. Maybe that's what we're being called to. Maybe that's our come follow moment. Maybe holy is standing here and saying, trust me a little more. Trust me to give you the words. Trust me to love you when nobody else does. Trust me to show up and show out. Trust me to guide you. Trust me to be here like no one else has ever been. And trust me to change your world. What you knew will be no more. Because it will be new. It will be transformed. It will be different. You will be different. Come follow me. And then it's our choice. Do we respond like the disciples? Drop everything and go into what we're being called into? Or do we go the Luke scripture route? Well, I got to go um, feed my cat and my dog, and mm. I'll catch up with you. <laughs> well, after I get my finances in order, I'll do that. Well, you know, after I finish my degree, God, then, then I can be more active in church. After I raise my family, God, then I, then I can do your work. Mm. After everything's perfect, I'll, I'll call you, God. Now, how many of you, if you were honest, you call God once everything's perfect? Most people call only one hand went up for y'all that you couldn't see. <laughs> Most people call God when everything's imperfect. When everything's perfect... Everything's perfect. Ha ha. Yellow brick road, prettiness. But as soon as the flying monkeys come at you, oh God, where you at? I need some help. Can you show up, please? Come follow me. And it didn't say, come follow me only when the flying monkeys attack you. And it didn't say, come follow me when everything's perfect. It just said, come follow me. And it's still the same. Holy is still saying the exact same thing. Come follow me. I don't care the circumstances. I don't care if they're good or they're bad. Mm -hmm. What I care about is your heart. That's right. And I care about if you mean it. Mm -hmm. When you say, I will follow. Come follow. It's your choice. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs>